this is before you rest, this is not fullness, say amen. Just say it with the fullness, say completion, fulfillment. So that's the season that we are entering into. Say this with me again, say Maranatha. So that simply means even so come Lord Jesus come. And I want to remind you that before he comes, you must have come into your season of fullness. Amen. Amen. Before he comes, you must have fulfilled everything that has called you to fulfill. So that is why we're very passionate about the season we're in. Season of fullness. Let me just remind you that you can have a sense of fullness while you are walking on this earth. In other words, fulfilling your purpose or a season of fulfillment, a season of completion should not be something that you discover by surprise in heaven. While you are walking the earth, while you are living under the sun, you can actually get a sense of where you are at with your assignment. So please, I want us to just keep on descending. That is why don't run other people's races. Run your race. Because the race that you are assigned to run, that is the, the race that you are designed, you are, you are wired, you are designed by God to descend. You, you really don't know where other people are at with their assignments. But God is actually speaking to you about your assignment. Amen. So I want to beseech you by the message of the Lord, as you walk with God, keep descending. Lord, where am I at? And that will help you to redeem time. The Bible says redeem time for the days are evil. Praise God. And I want us to, therefore, just have this conviction in our hearts. You know, Jesus said, it is finished. As he accomplished the plan of redemption for humanity, he said, it is finished. I do believe that, again, Jesus, from, from the time he hung on the cross, as much as he was going through pain, but he was consciously aware of where he was at with the plan of redemption. Says on Matthias. He knew exactly. And that is why he could not die a second earlier. Because every second mattered. Praise the name of Jesus. So when he said it is finished, in other words, he is now ready to say, Father, unto your hands I give my spirit. Why? Because mission has been accomplished. The mission that you sent me for has been accomplished. I pray that that be your story. When you stand before God, let it be said of you, mission accomplished. Let me remind you, Paul was actually aware of, of his assignment. He was aware. Every, every minute of his journey, he was aware where he is at. That is why he says to the church in Philippi, I have not yet gotten it. But I am striving towards the mark. In other words, I'm not done yet. Who knew that? That is why at that stage, he knew that no matter how many beasts he can encounter on his journey to minister the word of God, none of those beasts were going to devour him. He knew exactly that no matter how many bandits he would encounter along the way, they were not going to take out his life. Why? Because he understood the season of fulfillment. Praise the name of Jesus. And I want to beseech you by the mercies of the Lord. May you understand, beloved, where you are at. Please understand. I do believe that when the Lord will say to us, well done, my faithful servant, it will not be because of half-finished jobs. You see, here on earth, we can love each other. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but I've seen even awards for people who probably were not supposed to receive any awards. I've seen, I've seen awards for... <laughs> Let me probably not mention them. But you ask yourself, what is this award about, really? When we get to heaven, there will be no nothing. When God says to you, well done, my faithful servant, it will be because you have done what you are supposed to do. There is no patronizing in heaven. In heaven, truth is the ultimate thing. So I want us, therefore, not to tip. Please, don't, don't cheat cheaply the well done from God. 
into a lot country. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says some of us will escape into eternity as though escaping from the flames of fire. And there will be no well done for it. I know whether there are people who have done big things who will not hear God say well done. Because their hearts were not at the right place. So God is not just looking at the magnitude of the work of our hands. He's also looking at the attitude of the heart as well. So that is why we desire fullness, not just in the work of our hands, but fullness even in the rightness of our attitude. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, redeem time, which simply means God is going to ensure that there is divine acceleration. That will happen for you to fulfill your assignment. Jesus is the soon coming king. And God is gracious to bring about divine acceleration so that there is fullness, so that there is completion. So we are living in the days of glory when things are going to be sped up. Hallelujah. You will see divine acceleration so that you won't have to go around the same mountain for 40 years. Whatever needs to happen in this season, it will happen. Just oblige. Just walk with the spirit of the living God. Cooperate with him. There will be no more delays, beloved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If there is something that needs to be done, it will be done in this season. Yeah. If there is a revival that is going to break out, it will break out. Yeah. There is, we're not going to be praying for 40 years for a revival. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God says, ask of me and I'll give you nations as your inheritance, the ends of the earth as your possession. It's going to happen in this season. Yeah. Why? Because there is no more time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I beseech you by the message of the Lord. Fulfill your assignment. When you wake up in the morning, don't think about entertainment. When you wake up in the morning, think about purpose. Think about kingdom assignment. Hallelujah. And there is a point at which you must get tired of entertainment, Praise the Lord Amen. That is why I keep, I keep nudging you to work divine purpose. And I say to you, beloved, maybe reduce the number of stories you're watching on TV. If you're a kind of person that can spend five hours on TV, Beloved, it's time, it's time to reduce that. It's time to reduce, reduce the time you spend on sports. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. For the sake of redeeming time. Because the days are evil. This is, this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 5 about redeeming time. Verses 16 to 18. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Yeah? When you wake up in the morning, you ask Father, what is your will today? Why? Because that is part of redeeming time. I don't want to be haphazard in my activities. I don't want to be random in my activities. But I want to know what the will of the Father is so that I may use time wisely. The Bible says, don't be unwise. Wake up in the morning. Father, what is your agenda? What is your purpose for me this day? I said to my kids when we were having a family devotion, there is no such a thing as living anyhow, and then somehow when you're older, you walk into the perfect will of the Father. The perfect will of the Father for your life is a culmination of daily decisions. Many of us are chasing after a big picture. There is a big picture of God's will that you're chasing after. And you are not realizing that actually the will of the Father is supposed to be in progress today. When you wake up in the morning, and as you make that devotional uh, uh, time for God, and, and as you spend time in devotions, you are already fulfilling His will. Praise the Lord Jesus. As you have that auntie, as you tell them words uh, that are going to encourage you, you are already fulfilling your purpose for the day. That is why Isaiah says, the Lord wakes me up morning by morning, and He changes my time, so that I may utter words that will encourage the weary. Praise the Lord Jesus. There is no such a thing that when I'm 30 years old, I will walk into God's perfect will. You do it daily. And sometimes you discover in hindsight that you've been doing it. When the day is over, and you lay your head on your pillow, and you discover, Lord, wow, I touched that person today. I touched that person today. I pray for that person today. And your will was accomplished today. What am I saying to you? The fullness, beloved, of God's purpose in your life is daily happening. It is not going to be a moment in time. It is daily unfolding. 
That is why we say to you, take each and every second seriously. Praise the Lord. This is what he continues to say. Do not be drunk in wine, in which is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit of God. There comes that word, fulfillment of fullness. Pleroma is the Greek word we've been talking about. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, you cannot be filled with wine and be filled with the Spirit at the same time. Let's put it another way. You cannot indulge in entertainment and indulge in the things of the Spirit at the same time. You cannot gratify the flesh and be left by the Spirit of God at the same time. It is for this reason that don't even count it awkward that you are growing less attracted to the things of this world. It's the will of the Father because of the season you are in. Don't feel your own mind when you no longer enjoy the movies you used to watch. Let's have a quick. Don't count it over. We were chatting with my father yesterday. Chiefs and parents were playing. And, 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 and I was asking him, so how do you feel? And, 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 and very, very, very uh, 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 interesting. My father said, the Lord delivered me from that long time ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whether, and, and, and that is why I want to speak to all the parents friends this morning. Praise God. Really, it shouldn't matter. It really should not matter. Well, why, why, why should the world fall apart just because uh, Paris lost yesterday? I see some empty seats. I'm not sure whether these empty seats are because of Paris. Listen, beloved. We, the, the glories of these things should be growing day by day. Hallelujah. We, 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 no longer, we, we should no longer be attached to these things. Amen. Divine acceleration is in progress. Amen. I want to talk about critical areas where fullness has to be seen. Where fullness must be made manifest. Number one, there must be fullness regarding your salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you aware that you are saved, but you are also being saved? Yes. And you shall be saved. Yes. And I want us to, to look at that, because that is fullness in progress. Yeah. Fullness in progress. And it is so important that you grasp that. There is no reward for starting in salvation and not finishing in salvation. That is why, again, in heaven, no one will be pro there will be no uh, uh, awards given to people who got saved but did not finish in salvation. All the people <laughs> who started in salvation but did not finish in salvation will be forgotten. I want you to be very clear about that. That is why the Bible says the the end of the matter is more important than its beginning. Please, that is why finishing is very critical. We really appreciate that you started. But please turn to your neighbor and say, please finish. Because there is no reward for starters. But there will be rewards for finishers. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. According to heaven, the work of salvation that is in progress in your life is supposed to be brought to completion. But the question is, are you willing to cooperate to ensure that completion happens? You are the one who will stop the completion process because there is no agent of heaven that is going to impose redemption upon you. You need to say yes. You need to open up your heart so that the plan of redemption is accomplished in your life. And, and I want us to, to, to look at this uh, further. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 10, regarding your salvation. Verses 6 to 10. It says, so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, listen to this, continue to live your lives in Him. So what would it be possible to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and not continue in Him? Please, again, I want you to preach to your neighbor this morning and say, please continue. Continue in Christ. Hallelujah. And then it says, as you continue to be rooted in him, be built up in him, be strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. Please watch for that. By our man, there was some philosophies. 
deceptive philosophies. You see, when, when, when you walk in this journey of salvation, don't just watch out for moral failure. Watch out for deceptive philosophies. There are people who are morally sound, who did not backslide because of moral failure. They backslid because of philosophies. Philosophies, ideologies. We are keeping we call that the philosophy. Philosophy. And I want us to even watch for further things. The Bible says, watch out even for human traditions. Eh? Yeah. Human traditions. And the Bible says, these are elemental spiritual forces that are going to deprive you of your fullness in Jesus. Listen to what it says. Be careful of these hollow, deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition. The elemental spiritual forces of this world for in Christ all fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought into fullness. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've been brought into fullness, but tradition, human tradition, can hamper the manifestation of that fullness. In other words, you are saved into fullness. But for that fullness to manifest, beloved, you need to cooperate with the Spirit of the living God. How do I cooperate? I avoid deceptive philosophies. Yeah. Sure. Amen. That is why there is always a problem when believers find pleasure in philosophies of life than the Word of God. Others are going to even have mantras. Mantras. Hmm? See, mantra. That are derived from Eastern philosophy. I, I will never forget attending a pastor's a pastor's symposium where they were looking at the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. And I was shocked. They were, this, this was a pastor's a, 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 a session on, on, on social justice. And they were looking at the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. And there were there were some 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 again, there were, there were, there were there were ideologies that were derived from the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. There are more powerful things that Jesus said that we as the clergy could look into. Why are we busy with the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi when the word of God is so full of teachings about social justice that we could look into? And please be careful, beloved. We will find ourselves busy with Hinduism right in the house of the Lord if we are entertaining philosophies of this world. So it's not quick. Please don't quote of Oprah Winfrey for something that the word of God has to offer. No. Sure. The words of life are in the word. Why, why are you quoting Oprah Winfrey when the Lord said something about the subject matter? Yeah. Which is more powerful. Hallelujah. Philosophies of life, philosophy, and, and many of us, and, and, and the world is actually drawing, drawing you very, very, very in a subtle way. You know, it's very subtle how they draw. You start with this yoga meditation. And then the next thing, you start chanting some funny things. When Joshua 1 verse 8 says, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night. You don't need a mantra to chant, to chant every morning. Yes, yeah. yeah. We don't need Buddha teachings. The word of God is sufficient. The Bible says he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. You will never achieve fullness in Christ as long as you depend on philosophies. Hallelujah. Please, watch out even for your morning iterations. What, what, what informs them? Your morning declarations, what really inspires them? Are they derived from the word of God? Or they are derived from human philosophies? New age philosophies. Please, be careful, beloved. That is why even when we study philosophy, for academic purposes, we are very clear in our heads that we're studying these things not to discover a way of life. Because we already have a way of life in the word of God. We just want to pass those exams and get rid of the nonsense. I like it here, no. we, we are not going to be informed by Sigmund Freud. Are you hearing me? Please. We are not going to have philosophical dictates giving us a way of life. Because Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord Jesus. So I want to appeal to every student of philosophy. 
Because sometimes things can fall apart at first. Hmm? When you are trying, even the, 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 your lecturers will even encourage you, you need to rediscover yourself. Yeah. Who said you need to have to rediscover? Listen, in Jesus Christ, our identity is found. Yeah. There is no philosophy that should challenge you to rediscover yourself. The Bible says in Him we live, in Him we move, and our identity is in Him. Amen. There is nothing to rediscover just because we are now studying philosophy. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen, we started evolution and we came out and stayed. Yeah. I mean, you will study and, and then write a test from evolution, and you know, you know this is nonsense. <laughs> but I'm writing it so that I can pass my exam, give it to the lecturer, and then you move on. And you tell Jesus, Jesus, they are teaching us nonsense. <laughs> but I need to get this degree. You get your degree and you preach the gospel. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We came out and stayed. We were not touched by the philosophies of this world. How many do it? And I want to appeal to every student don't abandon the treasures of wisdom that are found in the word of God just because we are now in the tertiary institution. Hallelujah. There is no institution that is wiser than the word of God. I can guarantee you that. We've been through the system. I have the right to tell you that because we've been through the system. I've searched higher and low now that there is nothing wiser than the word of God. There is no philosophy, there is no ideology that is wiser than the word of God. That is why I get very worried when a person with a PhD starts a, a becoming arrogant and proud. Because the Bible says, where is the philosopher of this world? Let him come and account. And the Bible says, he has chosen the foolish things of this world in order to confound the wise. Praise the Lord. The foolishness of God is wiser than man in his finest hour of wisdom. Hallelujah. Man in his finest hour of wisdom can never compare in wisdom than the foolishness of God. Hallelujah. Why is that? So I want us therefore to be careful of these elemental spiritual forces that are so attractive, so eloquent, so well presented in a flowery language and yet they are empty. They have no essence of eternity. Praise the name of Jesus. So please be encouraged. Your fullness is in Christ Jesus. And I pray that it be not stopped by any ideology. You have to manifest fullness as well of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit that you have received is full. Yeah. He is a full package. But unfortunately, many of us are not manifesting Him in His fullness. Have you noticed that sometimes we have moments of brilliance and then we get a flat tire? Moments of brilliance, another flat time, and sometimes we walk in the spirit and we walk in the flesh. Sometimes it's all mixed up. Sometimes you don't even know who you're dealing with today. Hello to my brother locals. Knock, knock. Are you in the spirit today? Or you're in the flesh today? So I want us to understand that there that, that are mounted forces of the spirit that we need to tap into. Dimensions of the spirit that we need to tap into. I love the, 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 the scriptures, beloved, the Revelation chapter 5. Maybe you can read this one, Mom, if you have the mic next to you. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne. <laughs> Encircled by the four living creatures and the elders, the Lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, Hallelujah. which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. The seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Make no mistake, this refers to the Holy Spirit. That is why the other versions will say the sevenfold spirit of God. Capture letter S. The sevenfold spirit of God. In other words, there is there are seven dimensions of the spirit that we need to explore and that we need to manifest. Because this sevenfold spirit of God has been sent to the world, to you, to you, so that you can manifest that spirit. Hallelujah. And Isaiah, the prophet, in Isaiah chapter 11, he explains this very well. 
If you read verses 2 and 3, about the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit, this is what he says. He says, He's the Spirit of the Lord. Which simply means if you are spirit filled, you must submit to the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you walk in the Spirit, you cannot be rebellious against the Lordship of Jesus. Because the Spirit of the Lord will make you submissive under His authority. He is the Spirit of the Lord. And then Isaiah continues to say, He is the Spirit of understanding. That's the second dimension. If you are truly filled with the Spirit of the living God, you will walk in understanding. You are not going to be clueless about life. You are a man or a woman full of understanding. Even if you are uneducated, people can come to you for understanding. Says Robert Tandia. People can come to you to receive solutions because you are filled with the understanding. It is understanding that is not offered at Harvard. This is the kind of understanding that you will not find that you case at them. This is the kind of understanding that is exclusively found in the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. That's the second dimension. The third dimension is the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll be wiser. I sat down with a man who was struggling, just like my testimony. He was struggling at school in his younger years. But now he's busy with his PhD. And I asked him, what was the turning point in your life? And this is what he says, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? He is the spirit of wisdom. Praise God. Even as we pray for our children, listen, as our children are going for their matric exams, one of the best prayers that you can make for them is that Father baptize them in your spirit. Baptize them in your spirit. Hallelujah. Why? He is the spirit of wisdom. That dimension. You walk in all manner of wisdom. Because you have the spirit of the living God. If you are struggling at school, I invite you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Be immersed in the spirit of the living. Be filled with the spirit of God so that you can walk in the wisdom of the spirit. If you are a scientist and you are praying for solutions to the problems, be filled with the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Who said the spirit of the living God is irrelevant to our academic life? Listen, beloved, many of us are struggling. I said to you, have you ever found yourself studying? You're studying and you're going over the same page for, for, for hours and hours. You cannot move. That's the moment when you should say, Father, fill me with your spirit. I've been stuck in the same page for many hours. Fill me in your spirit. When you're doing your assignment, fill me with your spirit. When you're preparing for exams, fill me with your spirit. Why? Because you're now tapping into the third dimension of his spirit. He is the spirit of wisdom. For dimension, he's the spirit of good counsel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then, yeah. when a believer or a person comes to you for advice, may they get a good advice. Why? Because you are filled with good counsel. This thing of you is didn't give them a stop. Yeah. Hallelujah. When people come to you, they must find life. Yes. It is wrong, beloved, that when people come to us, we will make their situation worse by giving them wrong advice. Yeah. Someone comes to you and they have problems with relationships, and then you add fuel to the fire. A better about time. Ah, no, that's all. Now, you know, when I'm on journey, ah, then I'm about to go about food. He called a believer giving an advice to somebody who desperately needs a solution. You are, best, you are planting seeds of division among the brother. Why? Because you have nothing to offer by way of good advice. Listen, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for the glory of God is risen upon me. Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over nations. And the kings of the earth should be coming to the light of your glory. Praise the Lord Jesus. When are you going to have the kings of the earth come to you for advice, for good counsel? How can Ramaphosa come to you? Was I like to advise Abasa on relationship issues? Praise the Lord Jesus, may people find life in you. That's the fourth dimension of the spirit. Hallelujah. Not only is he the spirit of good counsel, praise God, but he's the spirit of power, spirit of might. Hallelujah. May you walk in the spirit of the living. And unfortunately, many of us we go for the power. We don't go for wisdom, we don't go for understanding, we don't go for good counsel, we don't go for submission under his lordship. We want the power. 
Now all of that, beloved, must be buried today. We want all the dimensions of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We want the anointing, but we want wisdom. We want the anointing, but we want to be people of good counsel as well. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not pray in the counsel of their God. Why? Because you have the Spirit of the living God within you. You have a better thing to offer. What are you doing in the counsel of their God? When you have something more powerful. Hallelujah. Not only is he the spirit of power. I love him. But he is, this is the sixth dimension. He is the spirit of knowledge. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you can know things not by again going to school? God can give you divine knowledge. God can drop information in your spirit that nobody else can give to you. Praise the Lord Jesus. You will just know. You will just know. That is, this is now the prophetic dimension. Yeah. This is the prophetic. When you just know, people can't just lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. When someone is lying to you, you can know because there is a knowing. Yeah. There is a knowing within you. You can't just put people's legs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. You, you can't just mislead people because there is a knowing within you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is the spirit of knowledge, and I pray that you possess it. Amen. Especially in this day and age when we are surrounded by deceivers and liars. People will tell their lies eloquently. People will tell their lies in a very articulate manner. When they are done, you will know exactly whether it's the truth or not. Why? Because there is a knowing. And they will wonder, how come you know? How come you know? That, that, that is why <laughs> we, we, we said in another meeting, I won't mention it, the meeting, and then this guy says, uh, yeah, there is nothing wrong with the uh, uh, climbing on other people in order to get to the top. And I was looking around to see how many people have a know in their spirits. I looked around, I checked his what is the other but you came so. This guy was saying, if, if, if you really want to make it, that, make it in life, you must compete. And there is nothing wrong with the standing on other people in order to make it to the top. As long as you don't allow them to step on you. You know, like, oh, so, oh, oh, oh. and people say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And then I started looking around. I was looking for people who have been knowing and knowing of the truth. And I looked around my body, I guess I'm the right. I said, I mean, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of knowledge is in operation because, beloved, even if they can invite the most powerful preacher when he's of the word of God, there must be a knowing. You may not remember the verse, but something in you must say, mm, Are you on earth? This is not it. This is not it. That is how we are going to survive the deception of this age. There will be a knowing within our spirit that this is not the truth. Remember, he is the spirit of truth. And the Bible says he will lead you into all truth. How come we move in the anointing and yet we're so guarded? How come? How does that happen? You know why? Because we are picking and choosing dimensions of the spirit that we want. You go for the anointing, but you don't go for this divine knowledge. That must come to an end. If you are to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you must explore all dimensions. Hallelujah. The seventh dimension. This is the one that is mostly avoided. Again, we go for the anointing and we avoid this one. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I never knew that he is the spirit of the fear of the Lord up until I came across Isaiah chapter 11. The only thing I associated the Holy Spirit with was anointing. Even when we go to these meetings, pow, 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 fire, fire. <laughs> and you hardly hear fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord. No one ever says that. There is a dimension, and this is the seventh dimension. In the Holy Ghost, the dimension of the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. And this is not the old covenant teaching. This is the teaching that all, even all believers within the new covenant must be, must embrace what happened to the fear of the Lord. 
How come we no longer walk in the field, especially us charismatic people? We are so anointed, there is no more room in us for the fear of the Lord. How come that is, beloved? Can I tell you what the Word of God says about the fear of the Lord? Proverbs chapter 8, the Bible says to fear God is to shun evil. And then, the, 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 this is what uh, someone says, he says, I hate everything that is evil. The fear of the Lord is to shun evil and to hate everything that God hates. That's the fear of the Lord. And I pray that in these last days, may God restore the fear of the Lord. So that when you move in the anointing, it be clear that Father, we're still submitted to your authority. Hallelujah. We are subject to the authority of the living God. So those are dimensions of the Spirit. May you explore all of them. And may you manifest all of them. Here's another third area where really we would love to see you manifest fullness. Holiness. Hallelujah. Are you aware that uh, <laughs> the manifestation of holiness in a believer's life is supposed to be progressive? Yes. Hallelujah. You are supposed to be manifesting progressive holiness. What is holiness? Holiness means to be separated unto God. That's the word that gives. To be separated unto God. In other words, you are no longer available for common use, but you are available for divine use. The devil knows that I know that one is not available for sexual immorality. That one is not available for drugs. This one is not available for alcohol. This one is not available for lying. That mouth is not for lies. That mouth is for preaching the gospel. That mouth is for prayer. That mouth is for words of encouragement. It is no longer available for profanity. But here's the question, how come we find ourselves at times available to the enemy? You know why? Because we are not experiencing fullness in the area of holiness. Hallelujah. There are times where you find believers doing things in the ministry, manifesting, being separated unto God in the context of ministry. But when we do business, we do business like them believers. Our believers are not church. But no, this is business. This is not church. Born again believers are No, this is business. This is not church. Who said church is irrelevant to business? Who, who said the, the kingdom principles are irrelevant in your business? You are not yet manifesting the fullness of holiness. Because when we manifest the fullness of holiness, whether you're in church or in business, it should be the same person separated unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. So even in the business sector, I am not available to the suggestions of the devil. Amen. Yes, was not. I am not available to his offers in the business. That is why in the business, I'm not doing problems. In the business, I'm not going to be worshiping before a funny altar so that my business can make it. No, we are not seeing breakthroughs by erecting idols, praise the name of Jesus, so that our business can make it. We will not bow before the enemy for success. That's how we compromise. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you may manifest holiness through and through. Hallelujah. This is what it says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. It says, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Do you hear that? Perfecting holiness. So in other words, holiness is not static. The manifestation of holiness in our lives should be progressive. That is why we, we are said to you, there are times when you meet a believer smoking, Generally speaking, you should not give up on that belief. Because that's work in progress. All you need to say is, hey, Father, make him holy, sanctify him. Sanctify him, sanctify him, sanctify him. Up until he loses appetite. Up until all the cravings for cigarettes are stopped completely in Jesus' mighty name. And, and, and many of us, you, you will agree that there are areas where you are strong and there are areas where you are very weak. Amen. There are areas where you are more separated unto God than other areas. Yeah. That is why we need this perfecting of holiness. So that this perfecting of holiness may manifest even in the areas where you are not so separated unto God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
I want to assure you, when God is perfecting holiness in your life, you will see the difference personally. You will know that by God, all of a sudden, I no longer feel connection to this. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and that's, the, that's the power of the Holy Spirit injecting the fear of the Lord in you. You are beginning to develop hatred for the things that God hates. Yeah. Hallelujah. Things that you used to be in love with, all of a sudden there is a switch that is happening in your life. There is a shift that is happening in your life. You are developing hatred for things that you are supposed to hate anyway. Hallelujah. And I pray that holiness be perfected in you. This is what it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 to 15. It says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. This is also very interesting. Make every effort. Hyper grace preachers are telling us that there is no effort in holiness. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible says, make an effort. In other words, holiness is not going to just happen magically without you putting an effort. But this is where grace comes in. When you put an effort, the grace of God is going to sustain you so that you stay at it, so that you continue in it. So that you persist in it even when there are cravings and addictions in your life that are streaming to it. And, and the grace of God will say, say no, say no, say no, say no. That's why in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, that's what the word of God says, the grace of God has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to worthiness. We learn by grace to say no to things that are hard to say no. But you must make an effort. Yes, was a lot. You must make an effort. That is a simple thing. If you know that uh, you have a, 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 an alcohol problem, the beginning of overcoming that issue is to say no to places where you know they'll, they'll yes. give you alcohol. Yes. You, you, you need to say no to going to clubs. You, you need to say no to going to some of these lounges. You know, you, you know them. I won't mention them by name. You know them. The banner. You know, you know those places. You know, you, 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 you start by saying, no, I'm not going. The grace of God is giving you strength to say no. Because you know that once you are there, it's going to be even harder to say no. Therefore, I need to, to be strategic. This is effort now. That is when you apply your mind, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding. Because you see, you need the spirit of God even when you overcome sin. Hallelujah. I, I, I told you my story when, when a young lady was knocking at my door at varsity when I was the first year student. And I needed wisdom not to open the door. Because once I opened that door, I was like, I asked for the Honestly, I, I did not want to get good. I, I would stand my ground. She was coming with her bed to sleep over. I had to say, I'm not going to open this to you. She knocked and knocked and knocked. I said, Father, give me the strength not to respond. My head was going like this. <laughs> but I ended up saying, no. The grace of God was in operation. The grace of God in your sense, in your sense, in your sense. Don't, don't, don't open the door. Don't open the door. Praise the name of Jesus. And then that became a habit. That became a habit. That became, and again, this was a knowing that the Spirit of the Lord was actually perfecting holiness in the area of sexual purity. Because if I could master this, I would be able to master another temptation, and another temptation, and then another temptation. So that is how we conquer perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Hallelujah. Allow the processes. The problem is with default on processes. And yet you want to be holy. You undermine these steps and yet you want the ultimate product of holiness. Hallelujah. President of Jesus. Here's another area. Beloved, maybe let me just complete this verse. The verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 to 15 is clear. The Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Without holiness, Jesus is not coming back for people that have confessed to this Lord and sin. But Jesus is coming back for people who are holy. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So don't be confused that you have confessed to this Lord and sin. You must walk in holiness. 
And then the Bible says again, see that no one falls short of the grace of God. Oh, so we can fall short of his grace. Yes. You must not allow any bitter root to grow up and to cause trouble and defy men. So believers can actually allow things to grow yeah. that will defy them. Please, make no mistake, you are not impervious to sin. Yes. Yes, you are not immune to sin. That is why effort comes in here. By grace, I need to be careful of the roots that are trying to grow so that they can define my life as a believer. I need to identify these things. And this again we do by the wisdom of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we need to meet with other godly believers who will say, hey, watch out for this. Because some of these things are a blind spot to us. You need another believer. Someone can just come into it up and say, have you noticed that so and so is not interacting with you in a healthy man? Maybe you were blinded to it. Sometimes you need your, even your wife, your wife must say, watch out for this association. Because it's your blind spot. So that's the power of community. That is why you cannot do this if you are a lone ranger. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, notice what the scriptures say. Say to it not, that no one falls short. In other words, you are not just watching for yourself, but you are watching for other believers as well. That's a community of believers. Because we want to see God perfecting holiness, not just in my life. I want to see God perfecting holiness even in the community of believers. If I see unhealthy interactions, I need to talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Here's another one. We need to see the fullness of God manifesting in the area of spiritual authority. Spiritual authority. Have you noticed that sometimes when we cast out devils, sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't respond? And I keep asking, what's up with this? Sometimes we pray in the name of Jesus, we cast it out. They pull me demon. But sometimes we see it and nothing moves. I don't know whether I'm the only one who has experienced that. You guys look powerful. <laughs> but I feel so lonely. <laughs> there are times when demons just did not respond. I said, Lord, what's going on here? Say, Pastor, say, Pastor, say, Pastor, so walk the whole night, casting out devils, and nothing shifts. I want us to learn a principle today, and this is something that I am learning as well, because I have not arrived. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. It says, For, through, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. That's, that's very important. When you fight in the spirit, don't fight in a carnal manner. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you fight in the spirit, don't fight to prove the point. Yes. That you are anointed and you're powerful. Yeah. Don't fight in order to be exalted into a particular category of powerful men and women of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Fight because the spirit of the living God is, is leading you to fight that person. Not to prove a point. It says the weak points we fight with are not the weak points of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power. Now this to demolish strongholds. Ah, these are strongholds we demolish. We demolish arguments. We demolish pretentious behavior that sets itself against the knowledge of God. We take captive of every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Hallelujah. Now let me submit to you that these are internal battles. That we need to win so that we can fight in the spirit. Please catch that. These are battles that you need to fight in your personal space. Let me go over this again. You must confront arguments in your own personal space that are fashioned against the word of God. Because we all have, every now and then, we all have arguments against the word of God. There is no way you can punish things in the spirit that are opposed to the word of God when you are entertaining arguments in your own mind and in your own heart against the word of God. That's how we lose in the spirit, basically. You, you have grievances against God that are not certain. You are questioning the Lordship of God, but by the same Lord, you want to cast out devils. You cannot question his Lordship and walk in his authority. We need to Come against pretentious behavior in our own lives. Stop pretending. This whole thing of double standards must stop. Hallelujah. 
Where if you are for God, be for God fully. If you are of the kingdom of darkness, please make that clear. If you are truly saved, walk like a believer. Hallelujah. Don't be, don't be pretentious. Even in your struggles, don't pretend like everything is okay. Let me tell you something, beloved, something powerful. God is going to be using people who have struggles but are very true and honest to God. Amen. They're not pretentious. God is going to be using those powerful, those people powerfully because they come before God. Why, why God will say of a man like David, he's a man after my own heart? With so many blunders. Why? Because David will come before God and say, Create me a clean heart. My heart is burning with lust. I am burning with lust of God. Create me a clean heart and renew it in the right spirit. That is the kind of a believer that God is looking for. I keep saying to you, God is not looking for perfect believers. God is looking for believers that are true and honest to Him and say, Father, this is my life. These are my struggles. You'll be amazed when that person comes out of their prayer closet, they will be casting out devils. Why? Because they are not pretending before God. They do not come before God with layers and layers and layers. Let me say, God can see through your layers. There is absolutely no point in you bringing layers and many dressings before God. You don't have to put up a facade before Him because He knows the reality of your heart. You might as well just come naked before Him and say, Father, this is who I am. And I've discovered that those are people who tend to make greater progress by way of transforming when they can say to God, Father, these are my realities. Any knowledge that serves itself against God in our hearts to confront it. And this is what Paul was saying. Even thoughts, even thoughts that are against God. You wanna, if you really want to fight in warfare and win, you need to even confront thoughts that are not lining up with God's word. Because we cannot be fighting principalities, powers, authorities, and forces in the realm of the spirit while entertaining ungodly thoughts. Hallelujah. You come before God and say, Father, these thoughts, I take authority over them. Before I confront principalities, I take authority over these thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Deal with yourself. Before you deal with things in the realm of the spirit. Listen, and this is how Paul will conclude it. He says this. Once we are ready to punish every act of, of, of disobedience, listen to that. Once we are ready to punish, to punish every act of disobedience in our lives, then we will be ready to make obedience complete. Hallelujah. Very important. Be brutal against anything that stands against God in your heart. Please don't temper it. Let me say that again. Don't temper thoughts, philosophies, arguments in your heart that stand against God. Don't even temper things that are playing in your heart. You know, you, you know those neutral opinions, non capital opinions that we have in our hearts. That is why Joshua says, listen, before we cross over to fight the Canaanites, choose ye this day who you're going to say. Because people who are going to fight in that warfare and win are people who are totally committed to God. You cannot have neutral warriors. Hallelujah. No, no, no. See, pick a side. Pick a side. Are you for God or are you against God? Hallelujah. So that's how we win. We will be ready to punish every act of disobedience in the realm of the spirit once our obedience is made complete. Hallelujah. Your spiritual authority is directly proportional to your obedience. Yes, was the I've seen believers going to mountains in search of the anointing. You go to Nigeria searching for the anointing. You go to America searching for authority. When authority is at your disposal, walk in obedience. Walk in obedience. Can I just prophesy over you this one? People that God is going to be using mightily and powerfully in our generation in this time are people that are walking in obedience to God. It is not people who are so-called powerful men of God. It is not people who are on the radio or television or people who are on Christian magazines. It is not people that are popular preachers. 
It is not celebrity singers or celebrity gospel stars. No, 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 no. It is a simple man, simple woman on the street who walks in daily obedience. Those are people that God is going to be using in this season. And I pray that you be one of them. Hallelujah. Fullness of inheritance. Fullness of inheritance. This is another area. I pray that you may manifest fully. Hallelujah. And I'm looking at here and spiritual, and not just spiritual inheritance, but I'm looking at material and financial inheritance. Yes, I was alone. This is a season of restoration. It's a season of compensation. It's a season of retribution. It's a season of restitution. Because the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have life and have life to its fullest. The word is full, 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 full aroma, abundance. So God is going to attend to every case of injustice. Every case where things have been stolen, may there be retribution in Jesus' mighty name. May there be restitution. May everything, every, and many of us are seated here, you know what the enemy has stolen from you. Amen. We pray for the coming of the Lord that there be retribution. Amen. May there be justice. It is Jehovah Mola. Jehovah Mola. That simple means He is God, our recompense. He is God who will ensure that justice is done.